we thank God Almighty for this worship service. We are here in the house of the Lord. We wait upon Him. And we always put our trust in the word that the Lord has for us this morning. And we wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. Shall we look to God in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you a throne of grace, giving thanks to you. Come before you a throne of grace, humbling ourselves, and come before you a throne of grace as we are, Father. Lord, you are a good, good Father. We run to you, O Master. We need you at all times. We wait upon you more than watchmen wait for the morning. Lord, we lift up our holy hands in the sanctuary and we praise you, we bless you. It is good to praise the name of the Lord. It is always pleasant. Father, we know that you are here amidst us. Let your spirit move here in this place and touch each one of us. Visit each and every heart this morning, Father. Lord, we commend each and every part of this worship service to your loving hands. Help us to know more about you and grow in you. We love you, we honor you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Shall we all rise up together to sing our opening hymn, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me.
chapter 556 under the caption who shall dwell on the holy hill o lord who shall dwell on thy holy hill who doesn't slander with his tongue and does no evil to his friend in whose eyes a reprobate is despised, who swears to his own hurt does not change. He who does these things shall never be moved. Glory be to the Father, Hi everyone, good morning. So today is Father's Day and we celebrate it. So it's fitting to take this time to praise our Heavenly Father who is a good, loving, holy and perfect Father who deserves all our praises, honor, glory. Let's sing a few songs. Father in heaven 
heaven, how we love you. We lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our praises. As your people declare your mighty word, blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who reigns. about us as we purpose to swim salt is only alone blessed be the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come blessed be the Lord God Almighty who reigns forever God first loved us. He loved us so deeply with a love that is vast beyond all measure. For he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, a propitiation for our sins, an atoning sacrifice. That at the end of it all, we could call him Abba Father. What a privilege. What did we do to gain such a reward? Nothing at all. So let us not boast in anything, not in our gifts, not in the power we may have, not in the wisdom we may share, but in Jesus Christ through whom we are ransomed. Let us sing our next song, how deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch like me his treasure. beyond all measure that he should give its only son to reign a wretch's treasure how great the pain of sharing loss the father turns his face away his wounds which mother chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon the cross my 
sand upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was a his dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything. No gifts, no pie, no wisdom. But I will boast in Jesus. His death and resurrection Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Father's love for us. Let's sing it together. How vast beyond all measure that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His treasure. In Deuteronomy 1, Verse 29 onwards, Moses says, uh, Then I said to you, do not be terrified. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God is going before you. Will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes and in the wilderness. There you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a father carries his son. All the way you went until you reached this place. We all know how this story turned out. Israel was not able to trust the Lord even after seeing all of this. But we are a people of the new covenant. We know that in all things, God works for the good of all those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So I invite you to stand up, put your hands together and sing our next song. Father, I place into your hands the things I cannot do, for I know I always can trust you. I place into your hands the things I cannot do. Father, I place into your hands the things I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go. For I know I always can trust you. Father, we love to see your face. We love to hear your voice. Father, we love to sing your praise and in your name rejoice. Father, we love to walk with you and in your presence rest. For we know we always can trust you. Father, I want to be with you and do the things you do. Father, I want to speak the words that you are speaking to. Father, I want to are the ones that you will draw me to, for I know that I am one with you, for I know that I am one with you. Thank you for leading us in praise and worship. We enter into a time of prayer now. We all go through troublesome time. This uh, trouble or the painful moment that we go through should not hinder our 
worship to the Lord should not hinder the witness that we have for the Lord and should not hinder the work that we have taken up for the Lord. Many times we forget the Lord, we fail to come to the presence of the Lord. David also had gone through this very experience that he writes in Psalm 138. He could not go to the temple and he prayed, word of God says, not in the temple but toward the temple. I pray toward the temple. Psalm 138 verse 2 reminds us that God helped him. We are here in the sanctuary, we are in the house of the Lord and we pray, we worship and our prayers are answered. We are so loved by the Lord. Altar is open, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. If you would like to come to the altar to pray and to worship, I welcome you in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks from the bottom of our hearts for bringing us together to your house, to your sanctuary. We lift up our hearts, our hands, and we worship you. We praise your holy name. Yes, Lord, thank you for your goodness in our life. You are our Father, and we run from our inabilities, our insecurities, and we run to you. You are the strong tower. Lord, we thank you for your righteousness and you have imputed your righteousness in us. And uh, this righteousness is not from the law, but by the grace. Lord, we thank you for your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in our life. You have given us your all. Father, we thank you for this great sacrifice that you have done for each one of us to redeem us, to make us worthy, and to call each one of us your children. Lord, we are thankful, we are grateful. And we have faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is not dead and demonic faith, but this is the divine faith. Lord, we thank you for answering our prayers. We come. By faith, we come in faith. We pray, we supplicate, we pour out our hearts in your presence. We come to the altar, we sit in the pew. Yes, Father, thank you for meeting each one of us at the point of our need. We are here with some expectation from you. We are desperate here to meet you and to experience you, Father. Lord, you never discouraged us. You always helped us. Many times, Lord, we disobeyed you. We have not followed your word, not kept the scriptural standards in our Christian work. Our worship was hindered. Our witness was hindered. Our 
our work was hindered, our walk was hindered, yet you have forgiven us, you have called us closer to your bleeding side. Father, Lord, you have forgiven us, you have made us holy. Lord, we thank you for the offer that we all have at the cross when we repent of our sin and come to your throne of grace and pour out everything in your presence, you make your holiness so real to us. You make your forgiveness so real to us. Lord, we thank you for your great love in our life. You never punish your children. We are never condemned in your presence, Father. This is the safest place where we can come and uh, spend our time at the foot of the cross. Father, we thank you for uh, counting us worthy. Thank you for your high calling in our life. Thank you for uh, enabling each one of us to know that you are our loving Father and uh, you have bestowed upon us your great love. Father, we thank you. Master, as we are here in your presence this morning, yes, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are in troublesome times, perplexed, but not in despair. We are many times, yes, Father, persecuted for the faith that we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord, but your presence is always with us. We are not abandoned, Lord, we are many times struck down, but not destroyed. We carry around in our body the death of Jesus Christ, our Lord, so that the life of Jesus Christ may be seen in the lives of others. You have called each one of us to this very purpose, Lord, we thank you. Lord, remind us this morning that we are, we are in the palm of your hand and engraved in the palm of your hand, and you will never leave us nor forsake us. We are so special in your eyes, so unique in your eyes. Lord, we thank you for making each one of us the apple of your eyes. Lord, we are protected. We are shielded. Lord, we, we give you thanks for all these wonderful experiences, all these wonderful privileges that we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord, as we are here in your presence, Father, Lord, we want to know more about you and know more about the power of resurrection in our life to call ourselves Easter people and to, and to participate in the suffering of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We consider the present suffering not worth comparing with the glory that would be revealed in us one day, Father. Lord, remind us that we move from tent and tabernacle to temple. Master, we thank you for the hope that you have given to each one of us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we are here, Father, in your presence, we commend all of us to your loving hands. Master, we pray for people who are at the altar. Your hands have brought them here. We do not know the prayers of your people. We commend them and all that they are to your loving hands. Father, meet them at the point of their need this morning. Bless them with your peace, your word, Father, above all the assurances that you have made in your scriptures. Help them to trust not in chariots, not in horses, but in the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you for all that you have for each one of us this day and this week, Father. We commend everybody this morning to your loving hands and we we commend each one of us and all that we do to your loving hands master bless all our efforts in building your kingdom through the ministry of the church lord as we are here in your presence this morning we also pray for the words that you have for us yes father prepare our hearts to accept your word. Help us to take the best out of the word that would come to each one of us this morning. Anoint your servant afresh. We give you glory. We give you honor. We love you so much. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to say while we pray Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. morning. Hi. So what a joy to come together and, and we thank God for this privilege that he has given us. And, and each of you, as we sit here, we are living testimonies of God's faithfulness in our lives and God's goodness in our lives. And we pray that even as we sit through the, uh, sit in, our, uh, in his presence and even as we worship him this morning together, that our prayer is that God will minister to you that, that his word that he has prepared for us, that through his word, we'll find comfort. Through his word, we'll find assurance. Through his word, we'll find strength that you need to go on to live a life that he has given and the call that he has placed on his life, in your life. So we thank God for you and thank you for joining us. For also, also those who are joining us online, we pray that God will minister to you. So once again, welcome to our morning worship service. So here are a few quick announcements for the week to be made a note of. Weekly ministries will go on as usual and the details will be updated on the WhatsApp groups uh, during the week. New members will be received here at Richmond Town Methodist Church into our family next Sunday, at, which is the 26th of June during our second service. Please note those who want to become new members that this will take place next Sunday at the second service. Kindly note also, and please be available for the orientation. These details will be uh, posted on WhatsApp groups or, con or we will contact you. Uh, in, in during the week. Evening service today will be at 6 p.m. and we will come together in worship and in prayer and even as we come, to, also we come and celebrate the Lord's table. So there will be communion at the, at, uh, at the evening service. Sunday school will resume offline from 26th of June at 10 a.m. here at Richmond Town Methodist Church uh, campus. The WSCS will be selling uh, pesticide-free Totapuri mangoes, uh, so, so this, will, this, will, this will take place right after the morning service. So please note for uh, every two kgs, the price will be 50 rupees, and this will be right after the service, and also please do, and we also encourage the congregation to take part in their sales. The Indranagar Methodist Church, WSCS, is organizing an online Bible quiz, which is organized on 30th July 2022 from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. So all ages and all members are invited. 
The study portion will be book of Ezra, Nehemiah, and 1 and 2 Timothy. There's a registration fee of 100 rupees. As I said, this is open to all. So for more details, please do contact uh, Mrs. Susan Christina. Her number will be uh, 9900252015. I'll repeat, 9900252015. Or you can contact the Indranagar Methodist Church, church office as well. So this morning, even as we gather, we also gather to celebrate Father's Day. And today is a special Sunday. And we thank God for fathers. We thank God for people who, who, uh, uh, who play the roles, role of father as well in our lives. And we want to honor them this morning. We want to celebrate, even as we celebrate. So I want to request all the fathers, or also all those people, all the fathers, or also men who play fatherly roles, to stand up at this time so that we can honor you uh, and celebrate as we celebrate Father's Day today. So if you could stand, all the fathers and even men who play fatherly role in many people's lives. All right, so please remain standing so as the children will bring a small token of appreciation from the church. Here is a promise from Proverbs chapter 14, verses 26. It says, in the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children will have a refuge. Even as you continue to uh, take your responsibilities and perform your responsibilities as fathers uh, in your families and, and, and in many different ways, know that his promise is always present, that as you fear the Lord, that as you put your confidence in the Lord, that he will be your refuge and to your family as well. Please remain standing and once you've received, uh, just for another moment. And, and while we are waiting for this a token of appreciation to be passed on, is anybody celebrating their birthdays or wedding anniversaries? If you could stand so that we can also celebrate and recognize you this morning. Any birthdays or wedding anniversaries? All right, let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you, O oh Lord, are Father of love. You, O oh Lord, are our good Father. And we thank you, Lord, that in our earthly life, Lord, that you have blessed us with fathers and men who play fatherly role. And so, Lord, today, even as we celebrate Father's Day, Father, we recognize their role, recognize their leadership, recognize, Lord, who they are, and Lord, Lord, how significant, how important they are, Lord, in our lives. So, Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the past year. Thank you, Lord, in ways that, that you are using them, in ways that you, O oh Lord, are ministering in and through them in our lives. Thank you, Lord, in ways that you have provide, shown your love through them. Father, we pray blessing over them. We pray, Lord Jesus, that your favor will be upon them. That you, Lord, that, 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 you, that they will always have good health. That in this new year, Lord Jesus, that even as they continue to perform their responsibilities, as they continue to pour out their love, O oh Lord, in, into the, fa the family life, family, family members' lives and the children's lives, and Lord, in many other responsibilities that they carry, Father, we pray that you will empower them. Father, we pray that you will equip them, Lord, Jesus, that you'll provide every need, O oh Lord, in, in their lives, and Lord, that may you also be their lifter of their head, that Lord, as they continue to trust in you, as they put their confidence in you, as your word reminds us, that you will continue to be their refuge. So Father, we thank you, Lord, for these men. We thank you, Lord, for fathers, O oh Lord Jesus. So we praise you and give you praise, and Lord, we also thank you, Master for those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries. So Father, we pray that you, O oh Lord, will continue to be with them, continue to, Lord, lead them and guide them in this new year, and that your favor will be upon them, Lord Jesus. We ask all of these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated.
before, as we prepare ourselves to hear God's word, it's time. Our theme for this morning is passion articulated in Christ. And our speaker this morning is Reverend Vivek Gundami. Before pastor comes forward to share God's word, if you can turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 15, verses 17 to 20. Romans chapter 15, verses 17 to 20. Therefore, I glory in Christ, Jesus, in my service to God. I will not venture to speak of anything except that, except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done, by the power of signs and wonders through the power of the Spirit of God. So from Jerusalem all the way around to Elycrium, I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Over to you, Pastor. Thank you. Let us look to God in prayer. Lord Jesus, we give you glory and honor this morning. Speak to us, encourage and empower us with your word. Release your heavenly blessings upon us, Lord, that we may be your choice servants and disciples, learning from your word and being inspired as we apply the same through your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A group of uh, seminary students uh, gathered in the chapel one day. Uh, They were just about to graduate and the chaplain or the dean challenged them not to pray for a large church but to pray for a smaller one because of the stress and the problems and worries that go with it. He didn't have RTMC in mind anyway. So after five years after the graduation had taken place of these uh, students, one of the students who graduated returned back to this uh, college to give his testimony. And he said, contrary to what the chaplain asked us not to pray, However, I did ask God for a big church. And however, I also asked God for a pretty wife. But then my prayer was almost answered. Instead of getting a big church and a pretty wife, I got a pretty church and a big wife. Today is Father's Day, so don't kindly um, take offense at this. I am not in any way a feminist and never a male chauvinist. What intends to be the matter, of course, here is that sometimes we ask for the wrong things and we end up having the wrong thing. I stand before you this morning as one growing along with you in the knowledge of God and alive as you are because of his grace. And I preach this morning purely because of God's call upon my life to preach his word. And so, therefore, I ask you to give me your undivided attention as I share what God wants you to know this morning. So this morning, our theme is entitled Passion Articulated in Christ. And in the scripture that was read to us this morning, Paul describes that his passion to do what God had called him was to do because of Christ who worked through him. Now, as a matter of fact, it has been overwhelming for me to think how God could use one man called Paul because he was willing to allow God to work through his life. But God can do the same with any one of us sitting here or even watching us uh, online who are willing to surrender to him. And I want you to just think about that. What can God do through my life if I am willing to surrender all of myself to the Lord Almighty? What can God possibly do with me? I want to think about the potential that you and I have if we just would come to a place of saying, God, I want you to use me, I want to be usable, and I want to not live for myself, but I want to live for you and bring you the highest glory. Now, to be passionate about your call, all of us have a call, all of us have a gift, 
and in order to be articulated in Christ, in other words, we got to be connected to Christ. If I have got to be passionate about my call, and if you've got to be passionate about what God has given, it, given you to do, you've got to be connected to Christ. To the degree we surrender ourselves to God will be the degree to which God will be able to use us for his glory. And until then, we haven't seen anything yet except taking time and space in this world. Have you ever thought that this is what life is all about? My life is about surrendering myself more and more, that Christ should become greater and I should become smaller. If you just want to sit back and kick your feet up, you'll be out of here in no time, that's for sure. But then God wants you to come to a place and say, God, I want you to enlarge my borders and make me usable in this world for your glory. How many of us really pray that when we do and when we do so, how serious are we? God, I want you to enlarge my territory, just as Zebes prayed in the Old Testament. Now, I want you to make me usable in this world. Sometimes this prayer is so simple, but it doesn't come so easy to us because we are so much caught up in the level of stress and in our own world that we think it is all about me, myself, and my family. I wanted to bring to your attention one of the illustration which really happened in Mississippi. There were a group of retired people uh, in Mississippi who got before the Lord after their retirement and they said this, God, I, we want you to use us in our old age and let the years of our life be more influential now than our younger years. And when they began to pray this prayer, God began to use them they began a ministry where they travel all over the northwest of Mississippi, working with the pastors in the home mission field. They also began helping people who were suffering and facilitating people who were lonely and struggling, and then they assisted them find a church so that they could be part of a community. They pay their own expenses when they travel, and they live in, their, uh, live in the motor home when they travel. Friends, I just want to tell you this morning that God used these senior citizens. I remember some years back, after I was appointed here, there was a woman who's no more now. Whenever I used to go and visit her and give her communion, she would always say, Pastor, pray that God would take me away. The first time I went, the second time I went, the third time I went, I didn't really bother much about it, though it was very much there in my mind. But then when a fourth time and it continued, I said, God, not again. I don't want to hear that. I want her to live. But then one final day, the Lord impressed upon me, let her will be done. And I prayed so. Two months she was gone. I hope none of you come to me to ask for such prayers. If you want to find somebody, go home. That is not the point. I will pray indeed that God's will be done. That I can assure you. But the point is, no matter how old we are, unless we become a vegetable, God can use us. Now in Romans 15, 17 to 19, we read about Paul being used of God. Verse 18 through 19, Paul testifies in your Bibles, if you kindly read along, I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done by the power of signs and miracles through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's there in verse 18 and 19. So in verse 19, Paul is saying the key is not about doing signs and wonders. God can do that anytime with anyone he chooses to. He can do that with you as well. But then the key here is the last bit of that preposition in verse 19, the word through the Holy Spirit. I want you to understand something here, my dear friends, through these verses. The Holy Spirit not only does something through us, he also does something in us when we allow him to. Now, there are people who preach these verses in such a way that every one of us will feel condemned because we are not living and doing the ministry like St. Paul. That is very bad preaching. That is not what the Bible is saying there at all. 
Rather, our attention in these worships uh, should point to two persons that Paul is trying to draw uh, attention to. One is Christ who lives in Paul, and the second is the Holy Spirit who is enabling Paul to do these amazing things that he did in his ministry time. Paul is a man who's been positively affected by the inner working of the Holy Spirit. My prayer would be that God would have an inner working in each one of our lives so that we would be positively influencing the world in our time. If we want to have the passion about our call and be useful to the Lord, we have to be connected with Christ. We read that in the Gospel of John where Jesus says, if you abide in me and I abide in you and then you will bear fruit. That's the same thing being resonated here in Romans 15. We got to be connected with Christ and also being affected in the, by the inner working of the Holy Spirit. And we learn about this in these few verses that was read. In verse 18, in your Bibles, we find that Paul was passionate about his call and useful to God because he was steadfast in his assignment that God had given him, which came because of the association he had with two people, one with Christ and the other with the Holy Spirit. Are you associated with Christ and the Holy Spirit? Sometimes we don't understand the dimension of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and how they help us in our individual ministry and how they're individually responsible in the ministry or in the call, wherever we are placed in terms of our profession. Sometimes we fail to. If God is going to do a work through you, you have to see to it that it will be done through and through. Many of us are very good starters, but not very great finishers. Many start very good in their life. And down the hill they fall bad and there is no recovery. God is interested in how we finish, not just how we start. Paul had both of it. He started well when he was reassigned after being a persecutor of Christians. He started well, and he finished well in his own words where he says, I finished the race, I've fought the good fight. And that was because of the Holy Spirit working in him. In verse 19, Paul reflects that from Jerusalem and round about as far as Eliakim, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Now Paul is telling how God enlarged his territory of ministry because of his submission. Do you want God to enlarge your territory of your influence? Not to be famous, not to glorify yourself. That is not what I'm saying. So that God would be known. Would that be our prayer this morning? God, I want you to enlarge my territory so that you would be known. And that is what he's boasting in the Lord, not boasting about his gift. He's showing the compass of his influence all the way from Jerusalem to Europe. That's what he says there, isn't it? Now, if you get... Uh, if you want to get a perspective on that, from Jerusalem to Illyricum, it is 1,400 miles. And Illyricum is located today in what we know, the present-day Bosnia. Paul, once a persecutor of Christians, is turned around, redefined, and reassigned by God. And the Holy Spirit who was working in Paul caused him to be steadfast that God could use them from Jerusalem all the way to Bosnia without missing a single geographical region to take the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as he went about doing his gospel work, we know that Paul had problems, didn't he? He had troubles. He had difficult tasks. He had difficult people to deal with. And all of them made his life a bit difficult. And if anyone were there without having the spirit of steadfastness, they would have quit that first week. But Paul was steadfast all the way to the finish. And therefore, God was able to use Paul and do through him what he had assigned him to do. Paul was steadfast in the assignment. And as a result, he was passionate about his call. Now, if we have a call and we have not really been excited about it, though we know that this is the call and you have lost the passion, one reason why you could have lost the passion of your call is because of difficult circumstances and people and situations. 
You might have discouraged yourself. Yes, of course, there are people and situations that discourage us, but God doesn't see that. He sees how steadfast you are in your spirit to be able to claim what he has given you to go through it because if he has given you the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will guide you to endure into all steadfastness and through that suffering. If we have failed, if we have given up, if we have become so discouraged that we don't want to touch that call again, that's because we have not been associated with Christ and not been affected by the Holy Spirit. We have failed to see the power of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul surrendered his body and life. Have we surrendered our body and life? Have we surrendered our situation to God, to the Lordship of Christ, and allowed the Holy Spirit to give us the ability to allow God the Father to finish what he had started in our life. When we fail to do that, it's very easy to give up and lose the passion of our call. For we have not been articulated in Christ, neither have been affected by the Holy Spirit. It's only after we surrender. When we say, I surrender, I mean to say I get connected with Christ and I lose myself, not to become so lost that I don't know in my all consciousness, but rather I get connected to Christ for his lordship. And I also want the Holy Spirit, which has been given as a gift to me, to affect me all the days of my life. So in order to have the passion for the call we have received, we have to be steadfast in your assignment. What is your assignment? Now at different junctures of our life, we have different assignments. Right from our childhood days, we had our own call, right? We understand what our life was. If we were a student some years back, we had a call to be faithful in our academics. Now, if you're still a student, you've got to be faithful in your studies. That is your call right now. He doesn't want you to change the world. That will come when it comes. If you are a working professional, you have a call to work hard on your job. You've got to give all to your assignment at your workplace. And generally speaking, as all of us as the Christians this morning, we have a definite call to use our gift and share the gospel. So irrespective of your God-given assignments at different stages of your life, no matter how old you are right now, be steadfast and then you will be passionate about your call. Don't tell me I'm so old I can't hardly do anything. Maybe not. But until you're dead, you're still alive. And you got to know what call has been given to you at that juncture of your life. Maybe 80, 90, or reaching 100. You may hardly speak, but then still, there is a call, perhaps only through your personality. Sometimes silence is so great that itself is a call. You stop speaking discouragement, be silent, and let the joy of the Lord be reflected in you so that people know for why and what you live for. Secondly, Paul was passionate about his call because he was secure in God's promises, in God's purposes. Now, when you begin to discern that this is what God wants me to do in my life, there's a tremendous security in that. All of a sudden, nothing else matters. And I was saying this in the first service. I will not look at what package of salary I will get. I will not look at what kind of a building I'm going to live in. I'm not going to see what kind of an environment of a society I will be living through. All that will never matter, does it? When I know that this is what God wants me to do, all of that will not matter in my life. In verse 20, Paul is saying, it has always been my ambition to preach the gospel of Christ where Christ was not known so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. Now, as far as we know from the New Testament, Paul ministered in unevangelized areas uh, or more than anybody else during his time. And his calling was not to build on someone else's foundation. He was very clear about it. Now, this is a very unique call to Paul. God took him to places that had never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the word ambition, the word ambition in verse 20 in the book of Romans chapter 15 is the Greek word philothimiomai. Now, which actually is a compound word in Greek, two Greek words coming together. One is philos, which means to cherish something, and the other one is thime, meaning to honor. So what basically Paul is saying as he uses the word ambition is he's saying the idea is that I 
have cherished the call and I honor the call and therefore I am passionate about my call. Paul was called to go to the unreached people of this world. Do you have an ambition in life? Ambition in terms of, not in terms of general ambition of earning more money, that is not an ambition, that's greed. Along with the ambition, God satisfies us with all that we need. I'm talking about an ambition to be passionate about your call. Paul was perfectly secure in what God had called him to do and in what God had called him to be. Are you and myself included here, are we secure in the fact that God has called us to be something and God has called us to do something? If we are not secure about it, that is because we have disassociated ourselves from Christ and lost the affection of the Holy Spirit. One of the things I have discovered as I deal with people is that a lot of people are insecure because they have not discovered what role they have to play in life. They have not discovered what role it is that God wants them to play in the big picture of God's will while they are living on this earth. And the reason they don't have this security in life, the reason they don't have contentment in life is because their walk with God is so very inconsistent and so fragile that one day they have surrendered their all, the next day they are not. They've gone back to the world, far away from the world. Once you discern the call of God and what God's call is for you as an individual, you've got to remain steadfast in that call, otherwise you will lose the passion. There's a tremendous security in knowing that this is God's purpose for me and nothing else will matter. There are some people who would like to take the life of Paul and, you know, try to say that everybody got to be reaching the world, reaching the unreached. You have to be very, very careful with that kind of interpretation and preaching. That is not what the Bible is telling us to do there, isn't it? God had assigned Paul that ministry, not you and me. That doesn't mean that God assigns everybody else the same kind of ministry that Paul had. His purpose for you is different. You've got to find out. Or he will make you find out when you surrender to him. Paul was called to go to a place where he would not be building on someone else's foundation. Now that we call in today's term pioneer mission field or pioneer missionaries. He was called to go to places where Christ was not known. Where the name of Jesus was not even heard. That was a unique ministry. But remember that it was another, another man by the name of Apollos. He didn't have the same call. In 1 Corinthians 3, 6, Paul says, I planted, but Apollos watered. In other words, Apollos came along and built upon what Paul had already done. Apollos built upon the foundation of what Paul had done. And God was causing the growth of the church. You see... What we've got to realize is we don't have to start trying to be like Paul and replicate somebody else in our world today. That is not the idea. We can imitate their faith. Yes, we can imitate the faith of Paul. But then God will put you where he has to and where he wants to when you surrender yourself to him. That's where we will shine. That's where we will be secure. Otherwise, we will chase all our life trying to be like Paul and hardly making it close. You won't be doing what Paul did. Take this for granted. None of us will be doing what Paul did, either in history or even after we go through this phase. You won't be doing what Apollos did. You will neither be doing what I am doing and I will not be doing what you are doing. All of us are different. All of us have got a piece of a puzzle that God has given us and he wants us to fit in that puzzle the way he chooses. Back in chapter 12 of the book of Romans, Paul says, God gives us gifts and with those gifts comes what? He says with those gifts comes individual assignments. Somebody may have a small piece and someone else in the church may have a large piece, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what kind of a piece of a call you have, whether it is small or big. It doesn't matter in terms of how much influence it makes. All that matters is that whether you have surrendered to use that piece of the puzzle and move on in life. 
It doesn't matter what kind of a person you are right now. God has the possibility to redefine and reassign you. It doesn't matter what age you are. But when you begin to discern that this is what God wants me to do, you will find security in that. And you will be fruitful no matter the age you live by now. And God will use you in ways you cannot imagine if you're just willing to surrender your body, your mind, your will, and allow him to be God and use you. God has given me an assignment and I know what I'm called to do. And I'm content with that. And there's a great security in saying that. And I hope and I believe that all of us can say that this morning. I know that this is my assignment. And I'm content with that. I'm willing to grow in that assignment. That is where security comes from. It's not about chasing after degrees. It is not about having money. It's not about making more properties. Security is not in that. One day it is all taken away. To be secure for eternity is to find that you're ending up doing the purposes of God. That's where you're secure now and also in the life to come. Paul's influence had spread 1,400 miles because he was willing to be the vessel that God wanted to use. He was secure in God's purposes and therefore he was passionate about your call, about his call. If you have lost your call, if you feel confused about your call, if you've lost all that dimension of joy of being the person that you've got to be, this morning God has given you an invitation to come through and make your life, realign your life once again to rediscover the power of the call and the passion of the call first by remaining steadfast in your assignment. Find out what is God's given assignment to you and don't worry about the trouble that comes. He will give you the power to move on. And also know that you can only be secure in God's purposes. Find out, this is what God wants me to do and I will be secure in that. That's where you will rediscover your passion and you will be passionate about that call. Finally, verses 22 to 25, we didn't read that, but I'm paraphrasing that verses for you this morning. We find that Paul was sensitive here to God's timing. He was steadfast in his assignment. He was secure in God's purposes and now he is sensitive to God's timing. Please listen, Romans 15, 22 to 25. For many, many years, I have been wanting to come to Rome, but because of the calling that God put on me, because of the understanding of that calling is given to me, I have had to make choices that cut away what my flesh wanted to do. But I wanted to come to you, but I couldn't because I was being about the thing that God has put before me. Paul was sensitive to the timing of God. Many times we like to run ahead of God. We know that statement. That's not new to us. Sometimes we want to run far behind God because we don't trust him enough. We don't have that courage. All of that will be set right if I'm associated with Christ. A horizontal and a vertical dimension. And I will not lose out on the timing of God. But the good thing is, we have a God who even takes our mistakes when we have missed his timing. And he weaves them into such spectacular spectacular design that when we submit to him we will know that God is God and he proves himself to be who he is. Paul was sensitive to the timing of God. If we could look back over the years of our life, five, ten years back and find out about the times that we have missed the timing of God and messed it up, we could individually end up writing an encyclopedia on God's timing. I could do that. You could do that too because we're none of us are perfect. But we learn through those imperfections. Now here, Paul knew that there would be a time that he would go to Rome, but, at that, but that time had not yet come. He says, isn't it? I hope to visit you while passing through Spain. However, now I'm on a journey to Jerusalem in the service of the saints since I have a contribution for the poor saints in Jerusalem from the churches of Macedonia and Achaia. And I wonder if Paul even suspected how he was going to get to Rome when he said that, that he will visit them in verse 24. Do you know how he got to Rome? First, he did go to Jerusalem as he had planned, but he brought there the offering that the Gentile churches had brought for the Jerusalem church. He gave there. But he very soon found out that he wasn't a popular guy in Jerusalem. The Jews didn't like his preaching. They told him, down, get down to the temple and make a vow that he had. He, he went and did that. And when he got down there, 
he found that some Jews from the Asia Minor who didn't like Paul again, and they didn't like his, the message of his grace, drummed up charges against him that caused a riot in the city. You'll read all about this in Acts chapter 21. People went ballastic and spread a rumor that he took a Greek guy into the inner courts of the temple and defiled the temple. All of that was not true. The Romans didn't know what to do as so many allegations were coming against Paul and so they arrested him. It got so hostile that they had to escort Paul out of time and they needed 200 soldiers to take him down to Caesarea. And in Caesarea, he was stuck up in a jail and he was forgotten for two years. Nobody heard anything about Paul. Then they took him to Rome so that he could appear before the emperor because he appealed for the emperor. And this is how he came to Rome. He came to Rome in prison chains. I wonder if he had ever thought that he would come to Rome in chains, but he did. But though he ended up in prison, God had a beautiful design. He was sensitive to God's timing. He did not complain. Maybe he did, but he did not stay there. He moved on. Being sensitive to God's timing will not always be encouraging at that given moment of time. You may have to go through chains, but God will have a beautiful design. Paul got there to Rome, and the message was not just for the Roman believers. He got his message even to the very household of Caesar. As a matter of fact, we read this in fourth chapter of the book of Philippians in verse 21. I send you greetings, and listen to this, and also the household of Caesar send you their greeting to the Philippine church. He thought he was going one way to Jerusalem, but God's timing was impressive. It was at a time that God could use the gospel and put it right in Caesar's face and in his household, and they would come to know Jesus Christ. Paul was sensitive to God's timing, and therefore he was passionate about his call. Be sensitive to the timing of the Lord. I could go on with another example. We don't have much time. It is the Holy Spirit who will help you in this regard. I cannot be sensitive to God's timing by my will and wish. I can do that only by discipline, only by associating myself with Christ and being affected by the Holy Spirit daily. I will be able to sense the timing of God. This is the way, and you go forward in it. Friends, don't try to walk into somebody else's calling. Don't try to be covetous of somebody else's achievement. If God has called you to sing tenor, don't try to chase soprano. Otherwise, we end up with an alien voice and we don't know where it is coming from. Put aside the desires of your flesh and be available to God. Put aside the desires of your flesh. And I think we can do that homework for ourselves. What are the desires of my flesh? What is my flesh craving for every day? If I can deal one at a time with the power of the Holy Spirit, I will become much more sensitive to God's timing. On Father's Day today, let me ask all of us who are fathers here or got to be fathers sometime soon, what does God want to do through you as a father? As a role, as a call in your family, what does God want to do through you? Some of us are fatherly figures in our homes, in our communities. We necessarily don't see fathers in terms of biological way, but I see fathers in terms of being a fatherly figure. What has God called you to do as a father? How far does God want to take the influence of you being a father in your family, in the community, in the church, in the society? For the rest of us here, are we passionate about our call as a student, as a young professional, as a family member, as a Christian, are we passionate about our call? In case you have become discouraged, in case you're feeling very, very low this morning and you're thinking to yourself, I am unworthy, I'm useless, I'm meaningless, I have no hope, I have not done my life well, I've not carried out my assignment well, I've lost my passion in life. This morning, God invites you to surrender yourself. Submit your body, your will to the throne room of God at the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And there you will rediscover the passion for the call you were designed for that you received. And therefore, starting now, my dear friends, be steadfast in your assignment. Don't get discouraged 
because of difficult people and situations. Be steadfast in your assignment. Be secure in God's purposes. Don't chase what the world changes. You will not be secure any time, I tell you. You will only be secure when you are in the midst of God's purposes. And finally, be sensitive to the timing of God. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Listen to the word. Do your Bible reading. Pray more often in the day. There you will find the sensitivity to God's timing. And then your life will be fruitful, useful, and you will bring glory to God through the power of the Holy Spirit working in you because of the association with Christ and the affection of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning that you have not created us to take time and space in this world, but Lord, to use that time and space with the call and align ourselves with you so that our time and our places would be re-energized with your glory. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would encourage us through your word, help us to be steadfast in our assignment, help us, O oh Father, to be secure in your purposes and find sensitivity to your will and your timing, abiding with us until we call ourselves to be your disciples in your home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing God's word to us this morning. Even as we respond to God's word, let's rise and sing our closing hymn, hymn number 153, God of love and God of power. Let's respond in reverence and, and to the word that we have heard just a moment ago. Let us rise. you exit the offering boxes kept at every exit so from the pastor team we want to thank you for your contribution as well as your support to the ministry of the church and we continue to increase for you to continue to contribute prayerfully to the ministry of the church let us pray gracious are you lord 
the Lord who continues to pour generously into our lives. Father, we thank you for every blessing. We thank you, Lord, for the word that we have heard. Thank you, Lord, for encouraging us. Thank you, Lord, for convicting us. Father, thank you, Lord, that you call us to be passionate, Lord, and you call us in many ways. Father, I pray that each of us, O oh Lord, will live out our call. And Lord, that we, O oh Father, would continue to be connected with you. That as you continue to lead us, empower us, O oh Lord. And Lord, we pray that you, O oh Lord, will continue to use us mightily, O oh Lord Jesus. Wherever you call us and whatever you call us to do. So Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, for your word. We thank you, Jesus, for the privilege to, Lord, bring our offerings before you. Lord, we thank you for, for your blessing, for your generosity in our lives. And Lord, we pray that, Lord, that as we surrender these offerings to you, Lord Jesus, we, we ask, Lord, that you, O oh Lord, will bless it and use it, O oh Lord, for the extension of your kingdom. And Lord, in and through us. And Master, we thank you, O oh Lord, in many ways that you are working so wonder, wondrously in our lives. So we give you praise and glory, all these things we ask. In your holy, precious name, we pray. Amen. We see the benediction. May the power and the presence of God go with you. May the call of Christ lead you into fruitful labor. And may the Holy Spirit fill you with the joy of grace now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.